One more. Cheeky one. He's wrapped. SuperTech, so that's the valve kit that we went with. I'm guessing there's probably old valves in there. engines here and obviously the cat's out of the bag um, we've gone for a billet RB30 block so this is from bullet engineering Darren and I got talking probably well like three months ago now I guess when while the car was being painted so when things escalated when the car was invited to to motor X and we got flow coating the paint I really had to decide what motor we were going to use. And the downfall of the RB26 is its capacity. And we all know that it's it's only a 2.4 litre. Um, even though it says it's an RB26, if you count the the CC, the cubic inches, it's, it's 2.4, which is tiny. That's a very small motor. So to me, um, I wrote pros and cons of what motor I wanted. And at the end of the day, the RB30 had the higher capacity um, but I didn't want to just have a standard crank RB30 because they, you know, the issues we have with them with vibrations, harmonic vibe, you can't rev them and they don't sound that good. I'll be straight up nice with you. So then I spoke to Darren and um, told him about the, the channel and what we were doing and he was straight on board. So I'm a little bit overwhelmed at the moment because unwrapping this thing, it's just amazing. So. At the end of the day, we've gone a bullet engineering billet RB 3.2 stroker motor. Uh, it's got a Barnes external oil pump. It's got my cams that I've decided to put in it, which are Kelford 182S's, I believe. In the next few episodes, it's gonna be really interesting to work with the billet block, um, build it, put things on it. I've got a few little things I wanna to change to it, and it's all new to me, and I'm sure it's new to a lot of people. So guys, this is it. She's getting the billet block. I'm just gonna get stuck straight into building it. So unfortunately, I don't have all of the hot side here. So the hot side is still on its way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with probably the cold side because I've got everything there to do the inlet manifold. The inlet manifold runner, which has been machined to, to match. Uh, and it's also been machined to match the new honing out or whatever you want to call it, CNC machining of the head, which is pretty incredible. They took a lot of meat out of there. So I'm just going to start with little bits and pieces, um, little bits and pieces like the the CAS bracket we'll put up on because the CAS trigger kit is due here today. I've actually opted for a PRP one, a Platinum Racing product. So I haven't always been a massive fan of their stuff, but it was a no brainer with the trigger kit. We actually have to take, this is a um, Ross Performance trigger little piece on it for the trigger kit, but obviously we're swapping it over, so I need to take this off. But I just wanted to point out that 
these um, nuts are the new titanium hardware that you can get and um, it's pretty cool because they're like a 10 mil on the outside and then they're an allen key on the inside which is quite handy so just do these slowly one bolt at a time when you have to undo your cam bolts make sure you torque them up to nissan spec and use loctite where needed so it's time to put the air conditioning pump on so we've got all our brackets and mounting bolts from the fpg kit i've just put them in a bag so they didn't get lost or damaged now the ac compressor comes mounted to the bracket so the the guys down there do that for you we then just have to mount it up onto the side of the motor and of course mine's billet um it's not always going to be the case um either way it's still the same mounting position So there was a small change I had to make with this bracket. Bolts here didn't quite clear the, the sump right down the bottom in there. So all I did is swap these M8 bolts over to some cap heads, which are almost, they're not countersunk, but they are, they are a lot flatter and it gave me enough clearance down there. So far, how good does that look? So it's time to fit the, um, the alternator. Now, there's a few little things we have to do. So this is our barn's external oil pump, um, which you have to run with the, the billet block because you can't run a, an oil pump on the front. I believe it's to do with heat and other things, but you get much better oil pressure from these anyway, especially with the no flex in the billet block. So we have to remove this though. Um, it comes bolted from bullet engineering, but this spacer here is actually obsolete because it is that piece there on the alternator. So we're gonna undo this now, sit the alternator up in so we can get that belt on and just another thing done. Really enough, I had to get two spacers made up here. For whatever reason, it didn't quite line up. For, for some reason, they must be offset forward. I've done all sorts of measurements. I can't work out why, but I've just got two six and a half mil bushes to fix that issue. So these are the little spaces I had made up. So two six and a half mil, which will offset them just there perfectly. Along with the air conditioning kit for, for this build, we also got Frenchie's Performance Garage new steering um, pump kit and it was sort of a i had a 266 engineering one from the states and there was nothing wrong with that so this was sort of like a last minute thing just let's do everything fpg hks and raceworks it comes with again a bracket just like the ac compressor heavy duty but not over the top it mounts nicely just to the side of the block and an rb26 it'll amount to the head just there so the pump itself is great on the front gives you plenty of clearance especially for big turbo guys and also obviously the extra look at the extra room you got from the air conditioning pump now because it's so much smaller so I think the belt trouble that I had on the front of this engine is all now going to be solved just because of the new system, the new brackets, and also these extra idler pulleys. So you don't really need to run silicon all the way up, but I always use just a bit of RTV transparent in this case. And I just put a little bit in the corners, like I've said before, just there over the top and just at the moon, across the half moon at the back. And that just assures everything. But the rubber seal along here, make sure all this area is nice and dry and it'll clamp down nice. When you do the rocker covers or valve covers on RB26s, it actually is super important to do them in order. So I actually work my way up, like crossing over like this, and then you just do a little bit at a time because you can overdo them and you can also crack them. So if you start here, just nip that one, then go to this side, nip that one, nip that one, up to that one, then finish there and then you can sort of work your way back down, I guess.
I'm super excited about this kit. It's a relatively new kit, I guess, from HKS. It's been out a, a year or so now, but not many guys use it. There are 35 coil packs, but they're HKS's um, turn on it. I actually haven't seen this yet, but yeah, that's sick. Look at that. That is a mad billet coil pack yeah. holder. That's cool. Here's our Superfire Racing Coil Pro is what it's called. So I believe these are just like the R30, HKS's R35 coils. And it's made to go in this frame. Oh, there they are there. And they're on stalk. So they actually look identical to the R35 coil packs that you get. I just, I don't think you need to change stalks or not. Have a look. Oh yeah, yeah, this is cool. So this is the reason I, one reason I want everything HKS, but the second reason is check this out. So our coil sits in that. It's all got an O-ring that goes on it. And I'm guessing it goes down like that. That is sick. So let's have a look. We got one out. We got zip ties and bolts. Proper bolts. And then there should be six dogs. Six dogs. So when you're working with electronics in general or um, coil packs or anything like that, get yourself some silicon grease or dielectric grease, we call it here in Australia. It's good stuff. Don't use normal grease or lithium grease because it, it just doesn't go well when it gets hot and everything. So use a tiny bit of the grease on your O-rings. And then if I look correctly, it looks like these slip on here. I'm obviously not teaching mechanic school here, but the obvious one is to always check your spark plug gap. So the gap between the tip and the top, as a general rule, you should set it at one mil and close it up when you get on the dyno or you're trying to go for a bit extra power. Now it looks like we sit all the spaces down in. That's pretty damn cool. I actually like this kit so much that HKS think of everything. So if you look down at your coils, 
the way they've angled them, they're not all just pointed off straight into the side of the valve cover here. They actually point them, like this one here, is pointed back away so you miss your plug. I know there's um, other designs out there from other companies that that was a nightmare when it all looked good and it looked great, all asymmetrical, but when you went to put your wires on or hide your loom, it was a pain in the backside. And that's Japan and HKS, they think of everything. Problem. Come around the back. So, this hits. So, I did not know this, and it's a little bit silly on my behalf. I probably should have done a little bit more reading and investigating. But you can't run a valley cover with the HKS coil pack kit. I think they like to have it off to let heat out. And they normally, if you see all your HKS high response motors, they have those nice little red sort of bungs in all these. And it looks pretty good. But as much as I like it, I think I really would. Actually, let's look at it from the front. I mean, from the front, it does. It looks really good. But it also looks like something's missing. So I've already heavily modified this valley cover already by welding in this part here, filling it in and having it done. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna modify this one further by very carefully cutting out the back bit, which hits on the back coil pack. Um, and then we'll go from there. But I think I would like to run it. It just finishes off the motor a bit nicer. So we're gonna run it. I'll, I'll modify it. I'm a little bit gonna be very careful and dubious of how this is gonna go cutting it so we'll warm it up we'll, we'll do it properly and I'll do a cut and see how it goes I have fixed this it's a little bit daunting because with the piece that I had to take out is quite structural so we had to weld this up and I'm not sure if anyone's welded this stuff up before but it's from the 90s and it's just all this rubbish um, cast alloy and it's it's terrible stuff to weld it is possible you need to take your time and go slow but because we've taken sort of a main structural piece out of it i do worry about cracking but time will tell i had already removed the rear bolt holes of mine i think they're useless and as you can see it gets in the way of the wiring so i think that's unreal i'm pretty happy with that and we can still use the the valley cover pretty cool